good morning. We have uh, just left Lauren Port. Um, we're still in the um, entranceway to it, the fairway. So uh, once we're past the uh, outer green marker, we can get to sailing normally. We're running away from the wind. The tide and the boat speed is uh, basically taking the wind down to about three or four knots. So those are the things behind us. I am actually thinking about attempting to hoist the, uh, the mainsail and just see how that goes. <laughs> Normally you do not, you, you hoist the sail going into wind. So Beverly is going to do an attempt of hoisting the sail away from wind. Uh, this could be highly interesting. It could be highly interesting. Uh. I don't think it's going to work. Because the first thing it did was to put the catch that back. Right, okay. So no, we'll do it. We'll do it the traditional way. Okay, thank you. Well, you'll have to wait a bit then. Yeah. <laughs> well, if nothing else, we should see our failures, and that was what's commonly known as a bust. It was, wasn't it? I wonder. Actually, there's something about it. I'm going to give it another go. Oh, oh, oh! Uh -oh. Nearly. Well, the first one's three. Now. Might get away with this. Uh, it would be better if you undid the forward of the reef. I have to. No, you oh. haven't. Thank you. That's left the uh, Beverly's momentum. In tatters. Well, it sort of worked. Definitely not as easy as doing it the other way around. I don't really recommend it. <laughs> so we won't be trying that one again. But there's a bye. Well, I'm glad to report we're under sail. Hey! We both love that. Um, we had a great time in the secret anchorage. Uh, we did a bit of filming. Um, for a, another series that we're doing. Don't know if that'll come off, but at least we've started. Um, and um, we also had a night out at... Um, East Antrim Book Club. And we really enjoyed it, didn't we, Beverly? They were wonderful. They've, actually, every time we've been in here and had any dealings with them, they've been very, very good to us. Yeah, so um, if you are ever in the secret anchorage, um, they are open Saturday nights, not too sure exactly if they're open any other nights, but when we went on a Saturday night and they were open, weren't they, Bev? Uh -huh. And there's a lot of dinghy racing and things that goes on there. See, uh, when we were there, I saw lots of racing, so I think they're there fairly frequently. Yeah, uh, they were certainly there on the Sunday doing dinghy racing, so mm -hmm. um, it was really nice. And uh, thank you very much, East Antrim Boat Club. So now, hopefully, we're on our way up to Scotland. Yep, yeah, exactly. First port of refuge, if it all goes horribly, horribly wrong, will be Glenarm. Yeah, but we hopefully won't be doing that. <laughs>
um, but we're off we're heading towards Gia and um, we're just going to see what happens after that aren't we Bev? We are, so we're just going to enjoy our seal, a cup of tea time as always. Exactly. Well we're doing some diamond sailing and a rare animal has appeared off the starboard, sorry off to the port side, it is the lesser spotted snoring gainer. You don't see many of them under passage, but there you go. Well, Beverly and I are back at Gear. And I have to say, it's been a lovely day today. Uh, so much better than last time we came when it was absolutely chucking it down. So it was really nice to appreciate the island today. Um, one of the things that it has here is somewhere that you can put your little bit of art to show, say that you've been here. So we've added a salty last rock. Now in the pilotage, it does say that there's fuel here, but that is actually at the top of the hill. So it's a heck of a distance to go. There also is supposed to be water, but again, although there is a, a, a large pipe, it, it's not going to be workable for water. So forget water and forget fuel here. Works for jerry cans. Works for jerry cans, but really other than that, I wouldn't try it myself. a bit of an adventure with our mirroring ball last night. Um, when we came in, um, I was on the by trying to catch the mirroring. And the problem is this one does not have a pickup boy. Some of them do. There's about two or three we've seen that got pickup boys over that way. And um, the issue was that the hoop on top is not particularly big and it's quite loose. And when you hit it with the mirroring hook, it just falls over. And because of the construction of the boy, because it has a recessed area, once it falls into that, it's very difficult to get it out with a modern boat hook. Now, I was lucky. We have an old fashioned boat hook with a really big sort of pointy hook on it, very, very thin. And it managed to get in underneath. And once we did that, I pulled it up, Gainer came forward, took our Mr. Swifty mirroring tool and basically whacked the line through and we were on and the drama was over. But without our old fashioned book, boat hook, um, I think we'd have had a bad time. Now, we've seen a couple of other people coming into Muir. <laughs> They've had some horrendous times trying to pick these things up. Yacht ETV, in effect, has been watching people trying to get their mirroring lines through that. And the boat just behind us, um, we just happened to be passing on the dinghy and we offered them a hand. I think they were rather pleased about that. But we've seen a number of boats where the boats have just sort of stood off the mirroring for a bit, dropped their dinghies, people have gone forward and the dinghy's taken the line and, and put them through, which is, just a little bit silly. Um, if you're going to do these rings, I think they should be static, they shouldn't be able to move. If they do move, I think you're better off putting a pickup boy on them. It makes everybody's life a lot easier. Um, so behind us we've got a large boat uh, anchored just outside the mirroring field. Um, we had a look at the marked anchorage, which is down that way, and we went and dipped it using a lead line. And the problem was that really it is very, very shallow. We would have had maybe like 60, 70 centimetres under the keel. Um, we're not comfortable with that. So we've just stayed on the mirroring ball for tonight. I assume he's got better than that. <laughs> Somebody come and pass or give him a wave. 
And um, the other issue we have with that particular mooring field is that it's quite tight in some respects. You have a reef off to one side, there are patches of weed in there, there is one particularly deep area and the rest is all very, very shallow. And also the deep area is quite close to the mooring field. Now the tide round here, the difference between high tide and low tide is like 12 centimetres, like being in the Baltic or the Med. Um, but we just weren't comfortable with it. And you know what? If you're not comfortable, don't do it. So we haven't. We've just stayed on the mirroring ball and we'll just go off and anchor somewhere else. Island of Gia, and uh, we've managed to uh, get to the part that I love the best. <sighs> Isn't that fantastic? <laughs> you might not like it, but if you want to be a sailor, you've got to love that sound because it means that wonderful thing, which is you're under sail. Yeah. They are nice telltales actually, Bev. Yeah, they don't look too bad. They look pretty good. Well, when you are sailing, there's a huge amount of uh, ropes that you have to adjust uh, to get those telltales flying. Um, traveller, kicker. Um, what else were you adjusting, Bev? Oh, uh, the main sheet, I think that was about it, but basically just getting it ni the sails nicely balanced, um, pulling in the um, Genoa sheet uh, so that the telltales on the Genoa were flying. So there's lots of little um, things to get those lovely telltales flying so that you're going at the best speed. But unfortunately, we've just seen um, a sign of avian flu, which is uh, quite ripe at the moment, mm. because we've just seen a, a dead gadget. So it's a bit of a shame, really. That They're the magnificent creatures when alive. They are, but it was rather bloated when it was... Uh, Floating past the boat. Floating, but... Yeah. But, yeah, and we're just going to have a bit of wake now because we're going to get a motorboat buying past us. And he's got a, he certainly throws a good wake, I'll give him that. He's very, yeah. very picturesque looking. Yeah. I often do think that when they throw a huge wake like that, it's a sign of an inefficient hull. Mm. An efficient hull just cuts through the water and leaves barely no wake at all. And you see some boats that leave very, very little wake. Um, and you see other boats, they may as well just be a, a, a shoebox. Oh yeah, I would agree with you there. You know, they're, they're blight, they've got a very bluff bow and they shoulder the water at the side rather than cut through it. Mm. But, but, yeah, I've got great hopes for more wind. <laughs> <laughs> 